Scientists just discovered a mysterious entity behind the Milky Way. And without keeping you in further suspense, it's behind a galactic wall. And the best way to describe it is as a mysterious intergalactic force that is pushing against our galaxy. Sure, it sounds like the setup for an epic sci-fi flick, but truth is commonly stranger than fiction. And this mysterious entity beyond the boundaries of our galaxy that is pushing against us with incredible force is nothing but reality. We don't know exactly what it is, and we don't know how long it's been there, but we do know its name, the Dipole Repeller. And due to billion-dollar state-of-the-art equipment and the best minds of this era on our planet today, it has been determined that the Dipole Repeller is a center of effective repulsion in the large-scale flow of galaxies, first detected in 2017. What does this mean for our Earth? What does this mean for our galaxy? Stick around and find out. Strap in, and let's take another trip to the outskirts of our galaxy to identify that mysterious entity behind the Milky Way. Welcome back to Space Infinity. Astrophysicist at SUNY Stony Brook and the Flatiron Institute, Paul M. Sutter, is also host of Ask a Spaceman and Space Radio. Plus, he's the author of How to Die in Space. With all of his expertise and many years of experience in the field of cosmology, he's able to bring very complex physics to the table and put it into a lucid sequence for layman's to digest. So we're going to use some of his metaphors for the concrete learners who want to understand, yet don't have the time to study quantum or theoretical physics. Overall, dipole repeller is the result of the usual process of structure formation that's been happening in the universe since the beginning of our universe, 13.8 billion years in the making. To set the stage for the dipole repeller, we need to go big. And not only as big as our galaxy, imagine thousands of them. Just beyond our Milky Way galaxy, at 2.5 million light years away, there's another gigantic galaxy known as Andromeda. Its close neighbor has been named Triangulum. And aside from these two galactic neighbors, there are a few dozen dwarf galaxies. When considering all of these neighbors as a group, they're called the local group. And if you were to travel from one end to the other, you'd be traveling for a few million light years. Now that your brain has grasped this magnificent size, go bigger. The nearest big deal to our local group is the Virgo cluster. It is a massive ball comprised of over a thousand galaxies sitting 60 million light years away. Our local group and other groups in this patch of space aren't part of the Virgo cluster itself. Rather, they belong to a greater structure known as the Virgo supercluster. Groups and clusters are different from superclusters because they are gravitationally bound. Superclusters aren't. They're just collections of galaxies that are larger than clusters. But it can get tricky because different cosmologists might apply various definitions of the word supercluster and get a range of segmentations. So let's use one of astrophysicist Paul M. Sutter's representations. It's like a population census trying to define a metro area. Sure, there are city limits. But what about all the people living near a major city and working in it? Where exactly does it stop? This has been the deal of confusion when it comes to mapping our universe and separating the galactic suburbs from the galactic city limits. Despite the varied definitions, scientists have general outlines. For instance, the Virgo supercluster appears to be just one branch of an even larger supercluster called Laniakea. Other superclusters surround and connect with Laniakea, like the Shapely Supercluster, the Hercules Supercluster, and the Pavo Indus Supercluster. Each of these massive structures is hundreds of millions of light years long. Here's a good way to think of superclusters. They are like the foam you see when you add too much soap to your bath or soap water when washing your car. Between all those bits of foam are dime-sized empty spaces. In your bath, those empty pockets are the soap bubbles themselves. In cosmology, they're the great cosmic voids. Every supercluster defines the edge of a corresponding cosmic void. There's the Sculptor Void, the Canis Major Void, the Boötes Void, and more. Each of these voids is a vast expanse of pretty much nothing at all. They're just empty cosmological wastelands barely containing a few straggling galaxies, like oasis towns in a vast desert. The largest of these voids, like Boötes, are over 300 million light years in diameter. Everything within the billion light year proximity of our solar system is considered local. With that in mind, imagine the difficulty of mapping the local universe, let alone superclusters, and the entire universe. That's because all the dust in the Milky Way obscures our view, 
and we have to resort to fancy astronomical technology like sensitive infrared and radio surveys to get a sense of what's going on deeper in space. But through these various advanced instruments, cosmologists were able to identify the Shapely supercluster, Laniakea's closest neighbor. The mass of the Shapely supercluster is so impressive that it exerts a gravitational pull on this entire region of space. Every galaxy, including the Milky Way, is moving in that direction. However, there is another concern. The projected mass of the Shapely supercluster isn't quite enough to account for our velocity. So, cosmologists figured there must be an additional pull other than the Shapely supercluster coming from another direction. This is the dipole repeller, a hypothetical void, perhaps even a supervoid, that is sitting on the opposite side of the Milky Way. As the Shapely pulls us with its massive gravity, the dipole repeller does the same in kind with its massive nothingness. Astronomers have discovered that there is a vast wall across the southern border of the local cosmos, a vast assemblage of galaxies hidden beyond our own in the zone of avoidance also known as the South Pole Wall. Another good way to describe it is thousands of galaxies taking structures like beehives of trillions of stars and dark worlds, as well as dust and gas, aligned in a curtain arcing across at at least 700 million light years of space. It winds behind the dust, gas, and stars of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, from the constellation Perseus in the northern hemisphere to the constellation Apis in the far south. Unfortunately, trying to see it is pointless since the entire conglomeration is behind the Milky Way. This area has been quaintly called the Zone of Avoidance. An international team of astronomers led by Daniel Pomerade of Paris-Saclay University and R. Brent Tully of the University of Hawaii announced that this new addition to the local universe, the South Pole Wall, is the poster child among the other known great intergalactic walls and cosmographic space marks, including the Sloan Great Wall, the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, and the Boötes Void. As mentioned previously, the galaxies in the wall cannot be seen, but Dr. Pomerade and his colleagues were able to observe their gravitational effects by assembling data from telescopes around the world. With these studies combined with Dr. Tully and his colleagues, they have been able to study the distances of 18,000 galaxies as far away as 600 million light years away. By comparison, the most distant objects we can see, quasars and galaxies that formed shortly after the Big Bang, are about 13 billion light years away. All of these discoveries are confirming Edwin Hubble's theory of the expanding universe that was realized in 1929. Host of Ask a Spaceman might tell you, distant galaxies are flying away from us as if they were dots on an inflating balloon, and the farther they are, the faster they recede from us, according to the Hubble law. And this is where we get into redshift as that motion away from Earth causes their light to be shifted to longer, redder wavelengths and lower frequencies, like retreating ambulance sirens. Astronomers have been using redshift for many discoveries since it's easy to measure. It's basically a proxy for relative distance in the universe. By measuring the galaxy distance independently, the Cosmic Flows team, as Dr. Pomerade and his colleagues call themselves, were able to differentiate the motion caused by the cosmic expansion from motions caused by gravitational irregularities. Due to these methods, scientists have found that the galaxies between Earth and the South Pole Wall are sailing away from us slightly faster than they otherwise should be, by about 30 miles per second. Then, they're drawn outward by the enormous blob of matter in the wall, and galaxies beyond the wall are moving outward more slowly than they otherwise should be reined in by the gravitational drag of the wall. Keep this astonishing concept of space in mind. Studies and surveys show that the sheer volume of some of these walls are easily 1.4 billion light years long, packed with clouds easily 600 million light years in radius. According to Dr. Tully, we'd have to anticipate that our view of the filament is clipped, that it extends beyond our survey horizon, meaning the universe just might be too big for us to map. Yet regarding the South Pole Wall near our solar system, Dr. Pomerade noted, in nearby cosmological terms, one might wonder how such a large and not so distant structure remained unnoticed. In the ever-expanding universe, there is always something more to see. And luckily for you, you've already hit that like button and subscribe to Space Infinity to consistently learn more and see space vicariously. Be sure to hit that notification bell to get the latest updates instantaneously and head to the Space Infinity Archive for more out-of-this-world videos.